Western Michigan University cracks down on COVID-19. Yeah, WMU says that nearly 79% of its student body is vaccinated, but for those who are not, they will now have to pay up if they ever skip a mandatory testing. News Channel 3's Chris Yu joins us live from campus to explain how this new policy will work. Chris. Yeah, Eric and Andy, WMU says unvaccinated students who skip their mandatory weekly COVID tests will have to face fines beginning next month. Now, those fines start out at $50 per skipped test and then rise to $100 for repeated violations. I asked students how they feel about this new protocol. At Western Michigan University, masks are mandatory. So are free weekly COVID tests, unless you're fully vaccinated and your status is verified by WMU's health center. But WMU says some students miss their tests regularly. Starting January 10th, missed tests will get costly. I'm not sure if it will work well as a disincentive. WMU says students will be fined $50 each for the first five weekly COVID tests they miss. The fine rises to $100 for every test after that. I think it would definitely negatively impact morale. Student John Peterson, who says he's unvaccinated and must get the weekly tests, is critical of the new policy. Life happens, right? And a person who's already struggling to pay for textbooks, if they get fined $50 or something like that, that's nothing to sneeze at. Recent graduate Philip Perotti, who is vaccinated, also questions the new policy. I don't think there needs to be kind of an overhanging institutional sort of like, you know, not like gun to your forehead, but essentially, yeah, you know, with a big fine. WMU continues to encourage the campus community to get the COVID vaccine. The university reports that before the fall semester began, about 66% of employees and 40% of students were verified to be fully vaccinated. Today, the overall rate is more than 80%. Students say, uh, WMU says students who owe more than $300 in their accounts will not be able to register for classes. Tonight, Kalamazoo community members are calling for more of a police presence in their neighborhoods. But the Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety says it simply does not have enough officers. Tonight, News Channel 3's Trisha McCauley is live at KDPS to let us know how a staffing shortage is impacting policing now and in the future. Trisha. The Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety says they have 21 open positions right now. On top of that, Chief Coakley says they're dealing with an increase in calls for help. I can't put an officer on every corner. I would love to do that. Kalamazoo is seeing more emergency calls with fewer police officers to respond. Calls for services are going up and we got to continue to recruit. We're allocated to for 268 officers not quite there yet. KDPS Chief Vernon Coakley says the department responded to 117,000 calls for service in 2019, 122,000 calls in 2020, and are on track to have a record number of calls for 2021. Coakley says at full staff, KDPS has 268 police officers to serve the Kalamazoo community. Right now, they are down 21 officers. Residents want more more policing in their in their community, right? So do our businesses. And we're doing uh, what we can at this time with what we have to get that accomplished. The Kalamazoo County Transportation Authority is asking the city for a full-time police presence at the Transportation Center following a random shooting that injured three people last month. They need security guards with guns. They can't have no mace or none. They got to have guns. Western Michigan University students are petitioning for more police patrols off campus near Fraternity Village, where many students live. A 19-year-old student was hit by a suspected drunk driver and killed while crossing the street near Fraternity Village last month. Is the community need greater at this time than what KDPS can really provide? We're going to provide a service to this community for what we have and continue to recruit to get to the allocation number of 268. We can answer any call in our community. Coakley says his department is continuing to struggle with recruiting, hiring, and retention. KDPS has had numerous recruiting events over the past year and try and bring on more officers that they say interest is limited. Coakley says his team is now working to come up with unique ways to try and bring people back into law enforcement. 
The new fiscal year is right around the corner and in Kalamazoo, that means deciding just how to spend some $245 million. Yeah, and that, mon that number is almost 15% higher than this year's budget. News Channel 3's Chris Yu joins us live from Kalamazoo to explain some of the city's top priorities, Chris. Yeah, Eric and Andy, one of the biggest areas that the proposed budget will focus on is public safety. That's why 45% of the $73 million in the proposed general fund will go toward police, fire, and EMS. During tonight's city commission meeting, the Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety Chief, Vernon Coakley, talked about what it takes to help reduce violence. We have to continue to work together. The dollars are there. We know we have the resources. It's gonna take people to make those resources work in our community. And it's important for us to all step up and not point the finger at one, one organization or one person, but let us all talk about how we, how we do this together. Under the proposed 2022 budget, nearly $33 million will be used for public safety. That's about half a million dollars more than the current budget. KDPS responded to more than 120,000 calls to service this year. The proposed 2022 budget would allow KDPS to add two more full-time positions. That includes a new emergency manager position for the city. The county already has its own emergency manager who prepares for, for responds to, and mitigates disasters. Now, under the proposed budget, KDPS will continue to build community relationships and work to reduce gun violence. In fact, as of yesterday, there have been 392 assaults with a firearm in Kalamazoo so far this year. Now, a public hearing on the proposed budget is scheduled to take place on January 3rd, and the city commission will vote on it on January 17th.